Harry Maguire was put in the spotlight last week, and I want to say a big thank you to the comments, to the feedback. There was tons of it, tons of good feedback on that Maguire video in the spotlight, a new series. So today I'm going to put Marcus Rashford in the spotlight. And the same thing as last time. I'm going to run through what I would consider positives of his game, what I would consider negatives of his game. And also going to include your fan opinion towards the end of the video. Before I do these videos, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at United People's TV, because I'll ask your opinion on there. And you can get your opinion included in the video. But make sure you drop a goddamn like on the video. Tons of you engaged in it last time. Not many of you liked it. So it helps us out. Drop a like on the video, but let's talk about Marcus Rashford this time in the spotlight. Now for me, the first positive about Rashford is the most obvious. Rashford bleeds United. He is 100% committed to getting Manchester United back to where it belongs, to where he wants it to be. He wants that to happen and he's 100% committed to the club. You can see that in every single performance he has. To the 90th minute, Rashford's attitude and work rate is relentless. And there's a reason why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has played him in literally every single game this season, whether that be from the bench or from the starting 11, Rashford has been involved in every game. And that's because he embodies that new attitude that Solskjaer wants to see more of in this United team. And Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford are probably the two best examples of that at the club. And yeah, it's hard to forget that he's 23 because he's already made 250 appearances for Manchester United. He's the fourth youngest player in our history to achieve that. It's incredible. And he's still got a long way to go in terms of growth. And I'll get into some negatives later on. But if there's one thing you cannot question with Rashford, it's surely his attitude, his commitment to playing for United and giving his absolute everything for the badge on his chest. And of course, it's not just about work rate and commitment and running from Rashford. He's come up clutch in a lot of big games. PSG, both years in a row. Chelsea away, Liverpool, City, Arsenal. Rashford's got a habit of scoring in big games. Now, not every he won't score in every game and he won't score in every big game. No striker in world football does that. But certainly in big matches, Rashford has proven that he can take his game up a level. And there's certain... I think Romelu Lukaku would be the best example of the opposite of that. Romelu Lukaku was brilliant at scoring against Wolves, Watford, anybody like that. But then you get him against Liverpool, City, Arsenal, he would, he would semi disappear in those games. Rashford does not. He stands up and he is accounted for in those games. And for me, that is a huge positive of Rashford's football. And... Weirdly, when Rashford doesn't play very well, and I think that's probably what a lot of people will say, they get frustrated with Rashford, and I understand exactly why. But the West Ham game there that we've just played is a perfect example of how Rashford influences games even when he's playing poorly. Because I think I thought in that game, Rashford's decision might be, there's plenty I'll get into later in the video in terms of the negatives. But in that game, Rashford didn't have a very good 90 minutes, went into extra time, and he provided a wonderful assist for Scott McTominay, the deft touch, and McTominay didn't have to break stride, just put his foot through it, and it was the goal that sent United to the next round of the FA Cup. And there's so many occasions this season where I've thought, oh, Rashford's got to come off. Leave Greenwood on, leave Martial on. But Solskjaer always leaves Rashford on, and a lot of the times it has me scratching my head, but there's so many moments where Rashford still influences games, even though he's, he's not playing that well over the full 90, that you can't really argue with it. And if you look at this stat here, man, there's only four players in Europe who have more goal contributions, that's goals and assists, than Rashford this season. Robert Lewandowski, Harry Kane, Bruno Fernandes and Erling Haaland. That's how productive Rashford has been this season. And of course, there are negatives, which I'll get into. But again, that's just outstanding. And what is just as outstanding as Rashford's on-the-pitch influence and contribution to United? He's become a massive role model on and off the pitch. Off the pitch, he took the government on. He made the government back down and U-turn on the fact that they weren't pledging free school meals through the holiday. He made Boris Johnson look like the absolute twat that he is. And he stood up for the people. And Rashford, at 23, to, to, to be able to do that in such a high pressure situation as being a United player on the pitch, to go and do that in his spare time off the pitch, He's just an excellent role model. And on the pitch, as I said, you can't question his attitude and his approach. 
So he's certainly a, a player that I think a lot of people should look towards at United for thinking we want to see more of that in the work rate of every single United player. But of course, Marcus Rashford isn't perfect. No football player is perfect. And there are criticisms I think you can fairly say about Rashford's game. And for me, if I'm being completely honest here, I would probably consider Rashford a one in four striker. And by that, I mean that I, I, I would expect Rashford to score once every four shots. You, you, we've seen time and time again this season. West Ham, for example, uh, the, when the ball came across to him, he had the opportunity to you know, stroke it into the corner or dink it over the keeper. But Rashford, he has a habit of putting his foot through it. And when it works, it works. But Rashford is yet to finesse his finishing game inside the box. And I think that can come in time. Remember, he's still only 23. But it's certainly a reason for a lot of frustrations for a lot of fans in that there's been so many big chances that's, that Rashford has had that he hasn't taken. And a lot of that for me is down to his finishing technique. And I hope to see that improve. Certainly you can't question his contributions to the goals and the assists, but he could have had more. And if he was more clinical, maybe he'd have Bruno Fernandes numbers already. And maybe that will come in time because he is only 23. But it's certainly a criticism I think you can fairly say about his game. And you can say the same thing, I believe, about his decision making. I would say they're the two biggest areas where Rashford needs to improve in his game. In terms of finishing, I already ran through it there. But in terms of decision making, a lot of offsides, for example. Rashford's not really the sort of striker that plays like Javier Hernandez, who relies on being on the shoulder of, the, of that defender to get in behind. Rashford could be like four yards behind the defender and he's still get in front of them. A lot of that is poor decision making from, from Rashford. He needs to improve in that. And especially when you... I think the thing that really frustrates a lot of fans is when Rashford has the ball and he's running at a defender, it's like he'll put his head down and he'll just run straight at them. He doesn't... He seems to, to lack the awareness of the players around him of what could be a better decision to make. And again, I think that will improve and get better with time. But just like you can, I think, criticise his finishing, I think you can criticise the decision-making as well. For me, they're the two key areas that I would say Rashford does need to work on. But he's not the finished product yet. He's only 23, remember that. And I think he will continue to get better. But what do you think? I asked you on Twitter what your opinions of Rashford were, and I'm going to run through quite a few of them now. Starting with Arsalan saying, Rashford is our second best player after Bruno Fernandes. Just really frustrating that his finishing has been poor. Could have been better numbers than Lewandowski and more assists than Bruno Fernandes. I suppose that, that's, that's the level that Rashford can... Can, can Rashford get to that level? Is that over, over-expecting of him? But given that he's fourth in Europe... There's only four players, sorry, in Europe who have be more productive than him this season. If he was more clinical and he did have better decision making, maybe he will get towards those numbers. Certainly that's what a lot of fans maybe feel. Next one here from Sash saying huge potential, still delivers when needed, but has the capability of producing numbers in the Bruno region if he starts being clinical and improves his final ball. So that's a second comment in there. Both you guys saying the exact same thing. Next one here from Steve-O saying it's not even hyperbole to say if he performed on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, he would be one of the best in the world. For now, he's still a match winner that can have off days and frustrating passages in matches. And he certainly does have it. Rashford's not a player like Bruno Fernandes that can be brilliant for the full 90 minutes. He does have those individual games, but they're far and few between. Rashford sort of fleets in and out of games. But he's certainly a match winner, which I 100% agree with you on that point, Steve. -o. Next one here from Abdel saying he needs to improve his decision making besides consistency and being clinical in his finishing. And I think judging by the comments here and the, and the opinions that you sent in, you, you kind of agree with me. You feel like the finishing and the decision making and the consistency, they're the things that are lacking from Rashford's game. And certainly if he did improve the finishing and did improve that decision making, I think that for me, they're the two most crucial ones. Consistency. It's very difficult for a football player to be consistent on the level that Bruno Fernandes is. And they're truly world-class when they are. And if Rashford can get there, he elevates himself to that level immediately. Next one here from the Libra Kid saying he just needs to settle in the box. He's good at picking up the ball and driving at defenders, but his decision-making and finishing can do with more work. Once he has those, I think he can be unstoppable. Let, let me know what you think about that. Do you think if Rashford does improve in those two areas, can he become one of the world's best? 
or does Rashford have a lower ceiling than that? I'd be really interested to know what you think about that, but thank you for the points and thank you for the comment, Libra. Next one here from Bayou saying, would be great if he could improve his left foot and his first time shot, be more unpredictable in the box. Now that's an excellent comment. I do think Rashford needs that unpredictability. Look at Mason Greenwood, left foot, right foot, headers inside the box, outside the box. With Rashford, he kind of know what he's going to do. If he plays on the right, he shouldn't play on the right. He needs to play on the left. But if he plays on the left, you know he's going to try and cut inside and you know he's going to try and ping one. Put his laces through it and ping one in. Rashford needs to get the finesse in his game, the one-twos, the dinks. He needs to make himself a more rounded and complete striker to take himself up that level. He's already at a very, fan a very good level, I think. He's top, top draw, one of United's best players. But to get to where he could be, he does need to improve in that sense. And a comment here from Archie, which I mentioned in the video, but Rashford is the fourth youngest player in United history behind Giggs, Best and Whiteside to reach 250 appearances. That really is a fantastic return for Rashford. I think it's, it, it's, I remember it. I was at the Arsenal game when Rashford scored two on his Premier League debut, scored two against Midtjylland in the game before. He went through a, a period of scoring on like his FA Cup debut, his Europa League debut, his League Cup debut, his England de debut galore. And Rashford really has stepped up to the plate. So to have 250 appearances already at 23, if he does, and I think he will spend his career at United, I don't see Rashford going anywhere. There's every chance he could, be, could become our record appearance maker. You know, he'd have to have a seriously long career to, to beat that, but let's see what goes on. Next one here from Goodchild saying, superb player, right mentality, needs to work on his finishing and awareness of other players around him. It's the awareness is a big thing for me. The awareness really is because Rashford does have that tendency of just putting his head down and driving to make the most of his pace and his dribbling, both of which are fantastic. But you just, you have to open your body up. You have to open your shoulders up and look at the players around you. And with the quality that United have, we have to be playing more of that intricate football in and around the edge of the box. It will probably help us with breaking down teams in a low block. Next one here from Campbellux saying, not taking his goal chances like a top level striker would. Look at Cavani. Slowed down a lot of the game when needed. No instinct when in the box to pass or shoot. Apart from that, he works his socks off most of the game, but he's 23 and can still improve. And I really think that Cavani, I hope he extends it by another year. I think he's a, a fantastic mentor for Rashford in helping him develop the, the parts of the game that aren't as natural to Rashford as the parts that are. His pace, his dribbling, his knuckleball finishing. They're natural to Rashford. Maybe being clinical and looking for the space in the goal and going with different deft finishes, making runs to the front post. They are things that Rashford is still learning, but he's only 23 and I'm pretty convinced that he's going to continue to get better the more he plays for United. Next one here from Er Hussain saying his work rate is amazing. Reminds me of Rooney. All he needs to be clinical and selfish to be a top striker to match at the level of Rooney and Aguero and Lewandowski. He's only 23, a long way to go. He has to be ruthless in front of goal. Show no mercy. The Rooney one is an interesting point there. Again, I'll throw it to you guys in the comments. Do you think Rashford can get towards that level that Rooney held? Rooney was an incredible striker. I don't think I gave him enough credit when I watched him. And I do see similarities in, in the tenacity in the work rate. Rashford's certainly less aggressive than Rooney. I don't think that would ever be part of his game. But we do have to see that ruthless nature. When it works with Rashford, it's glorious. But I would probably class him as a scorer of great goals at the moment rather than a great goal scorer. A bit like Martial last season before he turned it on and then fell off a cliff this year. But Rashford's got to round himself as a striker. When his technique works, it works. But he needs more to his locker. And that is something that he does need to improve on, which all of you have pointed out really in these comments. And one final one here from UTD JXK saying, Super potential, just so frustrating to watch when it comes to his finishing and decision making. And I think that really is fair. And that's probably exactly how I feel. Rashford, when he's good, he's great. But when he's bad, he is so frustrating to watch. And a lot of the decisions, they're not difficult decisions to make. It's just having the awareness, having your, having your head up will change Rashford's game. I think his natural instinct is to put his head down and bolt like a sprinter. And it works when you're running down the wing and you're trying to get past a fullback. Yeah, cool. But when you're running towards the other edge of the box, sorry, when you've, you've got to get past a defensive midfielder and there's a fullback and two centre-backs, you're going to run into a, a pile of men. And Rashford does that too often. He has to improve that awareness. That's one key element. And he has to improve that finishing. But all the positives I've pointed out there, you know, he loves United. He's come from the academy. He's come through and he, he's born and bred. And he, I think he could spend his whole career at United. 
He's a role model on and off the pitch. He turns up in big games. Even when he's playing poorly, he still contributes the goals. So you can't knock that from Rashford. But where do you stand on Rashford? What's your overall opinion of Rashford? Where do you think his positives are? And where do you think he needs to improve in his game? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as I said last time, let me know who you'd like to see next in the spotlight.